Salsaing, tapping, spinning, squirming. Oh my. Fidgeting is a common habit that may many have experienced at some point in their life. I know we have. So. That one just looked like I had fleas when I did that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what's going on to my right, but. <laughs> but what exactly causes the fidgeting? And is it really as big of a red flag as we think it is? Well, to tell us all of those answers, joining us this morning, he's going to break it all down for us, is Jason Robison. Jason, welcome. Thank you so much. Please debunk all of these myths and facts for us. So let's get down right to the root of it. What causes fidgeting? Fidgeting is often uh, related to the effort to control our attention and use our body to move feelings and emotions. So when we find our mind wandering, we may tap a pencil, we might tap our foot, we might doodle. We do things to stay connected to what's happening. So let's put it in perspective. What are some of the most common types of fidgeting you would see? You know, do we see certain types of fidgeting in certain situations as well? We can see certain types of uh, fidgeting in different situations, depending on the context of, context of the situation. Uh, tapping feet, fingers, clicking pens or a pencil, shifting weight back and forth. If people are standing up, if they're crossing and uncrossing their arms, if they're sitting down, crossing, uncrossing their legs, biting fingernails, playing with objects. If you're at a desk, things that are on your desk, moving them back and forth. Those are what we typically see. Huh. And now, where does the line, like, is there a correlation between fidgets that are most common in men or fidgets that are most common in women or maybe an age group difference, like there's a more prominent fidget for younger children or adults? Well, you know, there's there's a fidget toy industry now around oh, yeah. uh, right. kids. So, and, and in classrooms, some teachers allow fidget toys and fidget spinners and things like that. Stress balls are common for both children and adults mm -hmm. and depending on the context um, people will use things that help you know their attention stay focused so there's a wide variety and most often you know people who are in situations where they have pen and paper they're using that pen they're using that pencil they're moving around their fingers they're tapping the pencil mm -hmm. and uh, they're staying focused I have a question because my other half does something that makes me <laughs> I was nervous waiting sometimes. For this one. She starts twirling the hair and gets very yeah. quiet. And then I look at the eyes glazing over and I think, uh oh, what did I do? And I'm not aware <laughs> that I've done it. What what is what does that tend to signify, twirling the hair? So uh, it it is personal, it is unique for each person. Uh -oh. uh, often, you know, our minds and our bodies are connected. And so when we're when we're doing things with our bodies, like twirling the hair, we might be paying attention, our mind might be wandering. I have to say, a wandering mind is a natural thing, especially in situations that are time consuming, that require a lot of attention, and, and habits like that to help us focus are natural. I can't say what it uh, uh, says for your personal situation <laughs> because in another context. Of course not. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that's that's why I do, when I'm here at work and there's somebody droning on, I'm like, mm, what's going on there? Doodling. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I've just made art. But you mentioned yes, you mentioned fidget spinners. Uh, so it's been said that fidgeting uh, can help people with weight loss. Uh, like, is there a correlate? What is the correlation there? I'm not aware of any research that shows a correlation between fidgeting and mm -hmm. weight loss. There is a lot of um, research around kind of the underlying issues of fidgeting and using fidgeting to uh, cope with anxiety, to deal with stress. And for those situations where fidgeting is going to be perceived negatively or isn't an option, it is really important to have some strategies to deal with that underlying stress and anxiety and things like there's a self-help support group called recovery international which uses um, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy kind of slogans to help people reframe their thinking around stress and anxiety so if i have to give a speech or i have to appear on a TV show mm -hmm. and I'm nervous, I can say something like, if I lower my expectation, my performance will rise to reframe those thoughts. And for kids, 
when we have family situations and caretaker situations where we encourage them to discuss what they're uh, feeling anxiety about or stress about, that helps them interact with that emotion in a way that they're going to be able to use fidgeting in a positive way. Great information, Jason. So now I'm looking at fidgeting in a different light. Yeah, I was just going to say my thing. eyes have been opened to a whole different it's perspective. It's part of a function for all of us to get to the Fabulous right place. Fabulous information. Thank you so much for coming Thanks, on and, and dropping a, that knowledge on us, Jason. My pleasure. Thank Have you. Have a great day. Take care.